The G7 has vowed to continue military aid for Ukraine and expand sanctions on Russia. This was included in a joint statement by the group's foreign ministers as they met in Germany on Saturday. Meanwhile, Moscow says it will respond with adequate precautionary measures if NATO deploys nuclear forces and infrastructure closer to Russia's border. On the ground, Kyiv says its troops are pushing back Russian forces north of the city of Kharkiv and are reclaiming more villages. Russia's defense ministry says its air forces have attacked an arms depot in Kharkiv. It added they destroyed the production capabilities of a refinery used by the Ukrainian military in the city of Poltava. Dear colleagues, uh, thanks again for the very intense uh, meeting we were having. I think it was very good uh, that the foreign minister of Ukraine and also Moldova was there because it showed that we are in a situation of uh, hybrid uh, warfare, Ukraine being attacked military-wise and Moldova being threatened with regard to the stability. And we made clear that we are standing not only in solidarity with Ukraine, but also with Moldova. So thanks again for this important meeting. Now we are looking at the consequences uh, worldwide. Uh, as we have discussed uh, already, uh, the hybrid war is not only by tanks and uh, air missiles, uh, not only with uh, fake news and propaganda, but also it's a food war, which we can see around the world already. The corn being kept uh, in Ukraine because uh, Russia is not allowing millions of tons of uh, corn being exported in the world uh, is a big, big uh, stranger, danger. So therefore, it's really good that we are focusing now at the session at the global food crisis, which is showing up at the horizon. And we can only see the tip of the iceberg uh, at the moment. We all know that in the situation, if climate crisis hits in summer around the world, the situation will get even worse. Therefore, uh, we agreed already that we have to give a political answer as uh, G7, the most industrialized countries uh, within the democracies uh, worldwide. We take up our responsibility to challenge uh, these uh, upcoming crisis and to act uh, fast. We have started like our own initiatives, uh, everybody around the world, which is very important to act uh, quickly. However, we will come back at this uh, later when we do the tour de table. Um, I think it's very important that we are um, today are not only debating, but in the end adopt uh, seven commitments as uh, G7 uh, countries, uh, showing that we are being prepared, uh, countering this food war Putin is uh, uh, going through around uh, the world. So thanks a lot. And uh, Melanie will start with this session. And we thank uh, to the media. Um, see you later around. He is uh, uh, full of energy, yes. morale is high, he uh, takes very closely the tragedy at Azovstal with uh, the soldiers, what 
straps there. He is personally is very close to his, to his heart. But things kind of good. But things are more or less on the track. You know, Well, here we are. This is the seventh, the seventh meeting of the G7 since the Ukrainian war started. And I'm sure that we will come out with a strong message. The recipe is clear, more of the same. I mean more support to Ukraine, including military support. I will announce that we at the European Union, we will provide a new tranche of 500 more millions to support military Ukraine. It will make about, uh, yes, 2 billion euros in total. Thank you. 